This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This Sunday is an extra special Sunday. On today, we are celebrating all of the mothers. And when I say all mothers, I don't mean just a mother by childbirth, but you might have became a mother by adoption. You might be a teacher and you had to pull one of your students to the side because you had to teach them something about life that was not in one of those textbooks. You are a mother. You might be a big sister that had to raise your little sisters and brothers. You are a mother. You might be an auntie that had to take in your nieces and nephews. You are a mother. You might be a neighbor that has fed and clothed someone who was in need. You are a mother. And you might just be a mother of a church where everyone that can come to you for wisdom. It's so beautiful have God have it is so beautiful the way God created us to nurture and to love and to care for someone else. Because if you're anything like me, even when I'm in Walmart and I hear somebody's baby cry, I have to turn around just to make sure that baby is all right. So we celebrate you on today. And then I want to talk to those who still have their mothers. Celebrate her. Give her her flowers. Cook her favorite meal or go pick it up. Go stand in that long cheesecake factory line and get her some cheesecake. Make sure her grass is cut and the bushes are trimmed. Make it very special for her because this is her day. And to those of us who have lost our mothers, for me, it'll be four years next month. And whether it's been recent or a long time, it always seemed like it was just yesterday. During this time, it can be sad. But when that first sad tear starts to run down your face, let that be the only sad tear. Because the tears after that should be tears of joy. Let's remember our mothers. Tell your loved ones some stories about her. Even when they say, we heard this a hundred times, it doesn't matter. You're going to hear it 10 more times. Pull out that, those trinkets that you have kept in the closet or on the shelf, the photo albums, share those. I challenge you to do that. And on today, I'm going to start off by sharing the story of my mom. When I was younger, well, we always had ice cream in the house. We loved ice cream. Mama would go get a gallon of ice cream and a box of cones. And after dinner, she would make the prettiest ice cream cones, double dip. We would grab our cone and go sit in the front, in front of the TV. And we just enter that TV show eating ice cream. And I would always eat mine up so fast. And I would turn around and look at Mama, and she would still have her ice cream cone. And I was like, hmm. Then after a few times, I said, how do you still have ice cream and mine's is all gone? She said, I take my time and eat mine's while you in that TV and being greedy. I'm back here taking my time. But then I started to notice that every now and again, mama would get up and walk into the kitchen. And I'm like, something is going on. Because if she still got that ice cream, wouldn't it be melted by now? <laughs> So one day I said, I'm going to follow her into that kitchen. So I watched her as she got up. I followed her right in there. So I knew at that time, she knew I was about to solve this mystery. And she didn't say anything. She got the ice cream out of the freezer, scooped it up in her cone. And I said, I knew it. You was coming here getting another ice cream cone. She said, no, I wasn't. She said, I told you it was the same cone. I was just refilling it with the ice cream. <laughs> we have to remember those memories. 
We have to laugh. We have to smile. We have to let those tears of joy flow. My mother was so dear to my heart. So today I brought with me her Bible. She had this Bible with her when she took her last breath. And when I got home and I said, I'm going to open this Bible because I wanted to see what scriptures were highlighted. What was my mom's favorite scriptures? And when I opened the Bible, it was a lot of pieces of paper stuck in here and they're still here. But they were programs from when my daughter graduated eighth grade, band concerts, my son's Christmas programs. There was even a program from where my husband had did a play. And I'm thinking, these things were near and dear to her heart. And I kept flipping pages. There was even a program from one, one of our Sunday morning worships. And it just reminded me that my mama always said the simple things in life are the best. And it is really true. So I challenge you to share those stories and those memories on this day. Another trinket I hold to my heart is this necklace. It's not gold, it's not platinum. You could probably find it in a dollar store. But my mom was a librarian for almost 30 years. And this necklace, the quote on here just says, never argue with the librarian. They know too much. <laughs> and that was really true about my mama. I felt like she knew everything in the world. And now that I'm a mother, I feel like I hardly know anything. I'm just taking it one day at a time and allowing God to use me. So we celebrate you mothers. And as we prepare our hearts for this worship service, let's put all those things that are trying to hinder us, keep us from hearing God's word, let's put those aside this morning and open our hearts to God. I'm going to read Psalm 9, 1 and 2 from my mom's Bible. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Let us pray. O heavy, Heavenly Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for giving us another chance at life, Lord. We thank you for keeping us and being a provider. Lord, we just pray that you keep all mothers, Lord, especially on this day, the day that we celebrate them. So Lord, we thank you for the mothers. We thank you for creating us to be so strong and so courageous, Lord, to endure all the things that we have to, Lord. We wear many hats and we couldn't do it without you, Lord, so we thank you. And Lord, we thank you for this service today, Lord. We pray that the, the singers come and use their voices to praise you, Lord. And we pray that you keep, Lord, your messenger. Lord, as she comes and delivers what you have for us. So we thank you, Lord. We're going to praise you. We're going to worship you. We love you, Lord. And I pray you just keep us, watch over us, and protect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Motherhood plays an important role in the Bible. It binds the beginning and the end. These stories offer us a glimpse into the heart of God. And so we start at the beginning. Taken from the side of Adam, gifted with bringing forth life, the first woman was named Eve because she was the mother of all living. But she was also a mother in her own right, the first of many mothers to come. Though Sarah's womb was closed, God promised nations and kings would come from her. Ten years pass and motherhood seems as impossible as the day it was promised. But the Lord is faithful to keep his promises and Sarah bore a son who made her laugh. Leah was the firstborn, 
overlooked by her husband Jacob, who gave his heart to her younger sister. When the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. Despite Jacob's disdain, she found her motherhood in the Lord. When Pharaoh became angry at the fruitfulness of the Hebrews, Jochebed sacrificed her motherhood for the sake of her son. When Pharaoh's daughter saw the child, she had compassion on him. Because of Jochebed's sacrificial motherhood, the Israelites found freedom. Naomi was a mother who experienced the loss of her sons, yet she gained a daughter in Ruth who declared, for where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people, your God, my God. Naomi and Ruth became family by faith. Mary, a virgin and not yet married, was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. The motherhood of this blessed woman was more than the continuation of a family name, but a means for God to bring a savior into the world to save his people from their sins. From the garden to the cross, there have always been mothers. These women paved the way for all women, representing the full spectrum of the ways one could be called mom. Whether a mother in faith, mentorship, adoption, or by birth, you play an important role in the stories of generations to come. To all the Sarahs, Leahs, Jochebeds, and Naomis, Happy Mother's Day. Oh, you're beautiful to me. 
We serve an awesome God. Turn with me to First Samuel. And we're going to read the first chapter, the 10th and 11th verse. First Samuel, first chapter, 10 and 11. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, not until the child is weaned, then I will take him that he may appear before the Lord and remain there forever. And I want to use as a thought this morning the power of a mother's prayer. The power of a mother's prayer. Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers, mothers through birth, mothers through guardianship, grandmothers raising children, mothers through adoption, mothers who are simply stepping in as a part of the village to support a mother. For at the end of the day, we all know that it takes a village to raise children. But today we celebrate you mothers. We thank you. We honor you. We thank God for you. We appreciate you. And children, I admonish you to love, honor, respect, and obey your mother. Don't disrespect her. Don't walk contrary to the godly way she is trying to guide you. Honor her with more than your words. Honor her with your obedience. Honor her with your life. And when you feel she is not at her post of duty, remember that she is the mother. And it is God's business to bring your mother to her place. But it is your business to honor her. Dads, honor your wife. Honor the mother of your children. She is nurturing your child, feeding them, helping to provide for them, teaching them, loving them. And I want to say to my mother, oh, how I love you. I appreciate you and I thank God for you daily. And to my mother in love, I love and appreciate you and I I thank God for you and, and how you have been a blessing to me and Lee since the day we met almost 30 years ago. Today, my brothers and sisters in Christ, Make sure the day does not go by without thanking the mothers in your life. 
and to those whose mothers are now gone to be with the Lord. I pray this day is filled with the beautiful memories that you've shared. I pray that love fills your heart with gratefulness. And the word for today brings you the peace and assurance that the prayers of your mother are forever on your life and with you. There were so many amazing women in the Bible I could have referenced for this Mother's Day sermon. I thought about the virtuous woman in Proverbs 31, and I, I thought about Sarah who waited, and um, Jacobed, the mother of Moses who showed faith in God. I thought about Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. But as I prayed for God to let me know what he would have me to say to you this Mother's Day, the Spirit kept taking me back to Hannah. You know, God is something else. Last month, God guided the Sunday school planning teams to talk about Hannah and then have me come back to talk about her on Mother's Day. And so I started to read up about Hannah. And God is truly good. I could not escape Hannah's prayer. You see, church, prayer and praying is our relationship with God. It is our time to inquire. It is our time to listen, to act, and obey. It allows us the, the reassurance we need to allow God to move freely in our life. Prayer keeps us as mothers present before the Lord. It helps to root us and stay in line with God. Oh, he knows what he is doing. He knows what he wants to do. All he needs from us to do is to obey and to follow him. He knows that we as mothers face challenges, unusual times, and we need a prayer life. We need a relationship with him. Mothers, our children will put us on our knees quicker than any other thing in our life. A couple of weeks ago, one of my daughters had to undergo a biopsy. And it looked to the doctor that it was, in fact, cancer. And I had to put aside my concern. I had to put aside my, the, my brokenness. And I had to be strong for her. And the doctor told her at the end of her appointment that he said, I'm not going to call you and I won't send you a letter like we normally do. He said, I want you to come back and see me in a couple of weeks. I believe I know what is going on with you. And I would prefer that we talk about it in person. And I began to pray. As he was talking, I began to pray. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And it was the longest two weeks ever. When I was not around my daughter, I could barely keep it together. We prayed together. We called upon our prayer partners. And finally, a day or two before we were to get the results, I had a peace. And whatever it was that God decided to do, and today I stand before you in total praise, then not only was the answer not cancer, but all the biopsied areas showed that everything was normal. 
And as we went back to the doctor, I don't, he said, I don't know how this is possible. You see, when I looked at it, it did not look like this would be possible. But I love when I can get to see things work out. Well, all I can say is, he may not know. But we know, we know that it was nothing but God. Our children will put us on our knees before anything. This is why I believe the Lord is having me to talk about Hannah and her prayer. And as I share what God has for us to consider, I want us to keep in mind that God has ordained mothers, yes, as helpmates to husbands, but maybe more, maybe more as nurturing children, which is giving birth and caring for the growth and development of children. In the Samuel text, we have a woman who is on the opposite side of motherhood. Hannah is praying to God to have a child. She is concerned about being a wife and barren, shunned by other women for not giving her husband a child. For you see, it's during that time, in, in the period of time, that a woman's role was to give birth to children and to be a helpmate to her husband. Hannah, one of two wives, yet the wife of who her husband loved more, and yet she finds herself without a child. While the second wife, Pinana, had many children, and in her distress, she goes to the tabernacle, the place where she knew God would be waiting for her. You see, God already knows our concerns and what troubles us. He waits for us to come to him. He is just waiting on us. And Hannah goes to the place of prayer where she knew God would be waiting for her. You see, you don't go to God in prayer and wait for him to show up. When we get there, God is already there, just waiting on us. And allow me to put a footnote here. Hannah's prayer was to bear a child. But for many of us, it is to bear with a child. You see, we're not asking God to give us a child, but asking him to help us raise a child. See, there are some things that we can learn from Hannah's longing and suffering and frustration and despair. We are bearing with some children right now. A child who is ill, a wayward child, a child who has not yet realized their fullest potential, a child who has given up, one who is angry, disappointed, and sad, and in journeying with our children, sometimes a resolution to the situation seems impossible. But we do the best we can with our children. We share our personal experiences. We, we try to guide our children. We support and love them. We try to point them in the right direction. Only to be met with sly remarks and disrespectful comments and shrugs of shoulders and doubt. You see, I don't know about y'all, but, but my daughters most times think they know it all. And often they prefer 
to learn from their own experience. But I tell my girls that they don't want to experience some lessons. There are some lessons you should want to learn from someone else and not by experiencing them. But it causes us as mothers to go to special places of prayer. You see, she, she, Hannah needed something special from God. Something that seemed impossible, something that felt out of reach. And we can learn from Hannah as we bear with our children, which is to be specific in our prayer. See, Hannah was clear on what she wanted from God. She was clear on what she wanted God to do for her. She directed her prayers to God specifically and humbly in earnest. She placed that request before the feet of the one and only true God. The only one who had the power to do what she was about to ask. She knew her situation was way out of her control. There was nothing she could do but to see God in prayer. Mothers, there are things that we, we will endure with our children that are out of our control. Hannah did not make her prayer all about Penina and, and her many children. She made it about something specific that she needed God to do. Mothers, we have to get in the habit of going to the place where God has promised that God would be. We got to go as, as a child who needs his presence. We must never forget. We are forever children, daughters of God. He has promised that he will meet us in our special place. A place where we can speak specifically, humbly, and in earnest. And in this place, Hannah prays so hard. Hannah prays so earnestly that no sound can escape her mouth. Only her lips move. Has anybody been there? You see, she spoke with her heart. There are prayers we cannot speak audibly or share with our friend. Only God must hear. Her heart was compelled to know its own bitterness. Her silent prayer shows she was filled with the sense of the divine wisdom. When we are bearing and journeying with our children, there are times when the words should stay between God and us. And some of you all are not going to like this, but some of our children don't trust us now because we share their business with anyone who will listen. Share with people who cannot even help because we already know that God is the only one who can. And that's if he chooses. You see, our work is to trust God no matter what the response. There are many things that we want for our children. We want them to be successful by our definition. We want them to have the best of what life has to offer by our definition. We wish for them not to have to go through trials and tribulations. We want all of their dreams to come true. Yet we must remember we are handmaids of God. Whether God blesses our desires for our children or not, we will relinquish our desires to God. Hannah was God's handmaid. 
whether the blessing she craved was granted or not. Yet she asked God for the desire of her heart. All we can do is ask God for the desires of our hearts. This is what the word says. Ask, and if it is according to God's will, it shall be given. So Hannah says, if thou will look upon thy handmaid. She is saying, this is what I want, God. But if you choose not to grant my desire, not my will, Lord, <clears throat> but your will be done. God answers prayers. And often we feel that when it is not the answer that we wanted, that God did not answer the prayers. Some of us are still praying for some things God answered years ago. God's care for Hannah's re request is not as those who govern laws in the land that separate who will have and who will not. God can take hold of the individual man and his providence works for each one without injury or without injury to any. Now y'all pray with me. <laughs> God can grant prayers that lift everyone in the situation up. El Kanai, Hannah's husband, was about to get a son from her. Penina would have to release her provoking envy. Hannah would be blessed with the son. God is able to grant prayers that lift everyone in the situation. Hannah goes to the only giver of the natural life with a specific prayer. But Hannah does not stop there. She also makes a promise to God to give him something in return. Hannah promises to give back to God what he has so graciously given to her. Now on the surface, for some of us, that seems impossible. How can I give to God what I prayed for? Why should I give to God what he has given me? Some of us struggle paying our tithes for that exact same reason. But not Hannah, a handmaid of God. She does it beautifully, unselfishly. She understands that all God gives her as his handmaid actually belongs to God anyway. The precious gift from God should be given back to God. God gives us our children on loan. He gives them to us until they are called for their created purpose. They are not given to us for our pleasure only. God has a plan for them. Only he knows their appointed time. Only he knows their appointed hour. Only God knows when he is ready to use them. But growing children is hard work. It is a job God has assigned to our hands. It is ours to prepare them. Yet it is rewarding and an amazing experience. We have duties and responsibilities that God expects us to carry out. It is ours to teach them about God. It is ours to teach them about accountability, service, responsibility. It is ours to show them what love looks like. It is ours to, to, to help them understand 
what life looks like, what forgiveness looks like, what unconditional love should feel like. Because there will come a time when we have to give back to God what is God's for the purpose that he created them. Hannah made a vow and said, O oh Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me, and not forget your maidservant, but will you give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. And after a time, Hannah took the child Samuel back to the tabernacle and she left him there. For you see, God answered Hannah's prayer with the man child who she would give back to God to become a prophet for God's people. The plan God has for our children is always bigger than anything we could ever imagine and most certainly greater than the plans we could ever have for them. It is always for something bigger than them and us. It is always for someone else. And at the appointed time, we must return to the giver the gift that he has given. God honors a mother's prayer. I thank God for the prayers of my mother. I thank God for the prayers of my mother-in-law. From my grandmothers. I appreciate how they prayed for me and then got out of God's way. They got out of God's way so that he could teach me some tough lessons so that he could grow me, prune me, and stretch me. They gave me back to God to get to my purpose. You see, I'm grateful for my village who did the same for my girls. The children God allowed to cross my path to do the same thing. Mothers should find a place in the hearts of everyone. Mothers should be revered celebrated, and given flowers. Then a mother in whatever way is a blessing from God. And yes, it's tough. Yes, it gets lonely sometimes. Sure, it is difficult, but it is necessary. And if you would allow me to bring one more point, that I feel that will get this message home. I have to talk about Mary, the mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For you see, no one knows better than Mary what it is to give back to God what God has given. Mary's journey inspires and reminds us that we have been called to a bigger plan of God as mothers. It reminds us that we are chosen. We are instruments that God uses for his purpose through the children he gives to us for, for just a short time to prepare, to love, and to take care of with his help. We just cannot doubt it. Mary never doubted. She mothered from God's perspective and not from her own. You see, she did not need anyone else's approval. She was fearless in every way. And out of her love toward God, just like Hannah, she knew the word of God. She was filled with the spirit of God. She answered yes to God's plan. She loved her son. She magnified the Lord. But Mary knew there was a bigger picture. 
and it did not get in the way. As Hannah, Mary surrendered to the will of God. And when the journey of parenting presents its challenges, we should pray, specifically expecting of God only what God chooses to do. For you see, God takes care of mothers. For you see, as Jesus was on the cross and he looked down to see his mother Mary mourning, close by was the disciple that he loved. And when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, the disciple took her into their home. You see, God will take care of mothers. God will take care of mothers. God will take care of you. He will restore you in your journey as we are bearing with our children. He will bless you. He will provide for you what you need for your children. He will take care of you. We serve an awesome God. This is our call to discipleship. And if you are here on this morning, if you are viewing in and you heard the word that our pastor have just spoke, and that word have touched you in a way that God is saying, get up, get up, and trust me for your life. You didn't try it your way, and it just haven't worked. At some time, we need to give it to God and allow God to lead us down the road that He has for us. In a Psalm, in the first Psalms, uh, the twenty-seventh chapter, twenty-seventh verse, it says, "The Lord is my light and my salvation." Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So it comes a time and a day when you have to let go of yourself and what you know and put your trust in God. God is good, Antioch. He's a blessing, as well as the testimony you heard on this morning, how good God is. And I know that he has moved in your life, and you have experienced God's goodness. If you are here today, and you need to get your life right with God, whether if it's by finding a church home, to hearing a word from God, giving your life to him, renewing your life, rededicating, we're here. And whatever you need, as a church home, Antioch Baptist Church is here. Our pastors would love to hear from you and be able to help you in this journey. God is a good God. Amen? Amen. We just invite you to come.
First, while I get started, I just want to give our pastor, just give her a hand of praise for their word on today. God is a good God. He's just always right on time. Amen. Amen. I also want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, all the different hats you wear. Like that was said earlier, for whatever reason you came by all the time, it wasn't by birth that you came to be a mom. It was all different circumstances where you may have to step up and see one in need. God bless you. God bless all that you do as mothers daily. Uh, you know, it never, you're never overlooked. Every step that you, everything that you do is noticed. You are loved and appreciated for what you do. And I know you don't hear it and don't see it all the time. Just keep doing what you do. God is blessing you. He's happy for your heart and the love that you have to share with others. Amen. Just a, a word in, in Psalms also in the 27th chapter and the 14th verse. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And when you hear that word wait, <laughs> that word wait in a Hebrew reading is hope. It's an action. God is constantly moving, Antioch. God is not standing still waiting on you to get your life together. I just want to tell you today, no matter what it looked like, it's together. Trust God for your life today. Whatever it is going on, trust him today. Don't wait for that big explosion or nothing happen. Trust him for what he's doing today. God doesn't make no mistakes in what he does. We may not as human like every step he take, but it's perfect. We serve a perfect and righteous God. Amen. And if you're here today and you need this prayer, we just invite you because we want to pray with you. We want to we pray with you that anything that's holding you back Anything that's in your way of getting your life right with God, we want to ask that it be moved. We want to know that your way can be clear and your steps can be ordered by the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. 
Father God, oh, how we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day, Father God, because it's a mother's day. We thank you for mothers, Father God. We thank you, Father God, how you prepared their hearts and their minds to be all caring for someone else. Always putting themselves last. Thank you for a mother, Father God. Thank you for all mothers, Lord God. Touch them, Lord God. Let them know that you called them, not by mistake, that you've already prepared them for the task. Thank you, Lord God, that you called their names. Thank you, Father God, that you knew what they would be doing in their life, that it was grandmothers being mothers, Father God, that it was sisters being mothers, Father God. That it was aunts stepping up being mothers, Father God. In whatever way you had them call, you called them to this work. Father God, you already knew. So Father God, we just ask these mothers that's viewing on today, that you touch them in a special way, Lord God. If it had been held back from get being all that you would have them be, Father God, we ask that that curse, whatever's up on them, be removed. Father God, today they can get to their place. Help them, Lord God, every mother. Father God, bless the family. Father God, bless them in every way, Father God, that you know they stand in need of. Let them hear you. Let them feel your presence, Father God. Let them see your peace in their homes. Let them feel it, Father God. We thank you for mothers, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We ask him, Father God, that you, the blessings on the day, Father God, of Antioch Baptist Church. Father God, you know that we're being, getting ready to come back in to church. We thank you, Father God, to be able to come to this point, part, Father. But we thank you, Father God, for the year that we had to go through what we had to go through. Father God, we ask that you prepare us as a church, a ministry, to go out and touch your people like never before. Father God, that we have a heart opened for your people. Father God, that we come ready, running to serve. Help us, Lord God. Every leader, touch them, Lord God. Touch their families as well. Father God, keep them, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, that you're a good, patient God. That you wait on us, Father God. That you allow us to just trust you. Thank you, Lord. Have your way in this place, Lord God. Do what it is you do. Thank you, Lord. We ask, Father God, our blessings over our pastors. Continually bless Pastor Marla and her family, Pastor Andrea and her family, every minister, deacon, leader of this church. Bless them, Lord God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for our praise team on this morning. Thank you, Father God, that they sung from their hearts, Lord God. Bless them, Lord. We ask, Father God, to be with us throughout this day, that we can celebrate and enjoy our mothers, Father God. We give you all praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is our tithes and offerings portion of service. We're so grateful every time we have the opportunity to give back to God just a portion of what God has so graciously given to us. God has been good yet again, and we have come to the other side of a week, and we can see God's hand all through it. We want to remind you that you can continue to give to the ministry of this church through Cash App. You can do it by dropping a check off in the brick mailbox, 
or you can call Politis with an ACH withdrawal or set up a credit card payment. But we're just so grateful for how you continue to give so that the work of the ministry can be done. We thank God for Antioch Baptist Church that always looks for ways to extend beyond the walls of this church and reach out into our community. And you are helping us to do that. We're grateful for you today. We thank God for your giving and we ask that you continue to give as God has graciously blessed us. Amen.